we're going to be talking about friction force. Woohoo! So, first we got to talk about what is friction. So, friction is a force opposed to motion. So, this means that it will always point opposite to motion. Alright, now it's a little tricky sometimes, like for example, if you're walking or you're running, let's say you're running this way, you're pushing your feet this way, so the friction is going to be this way. So it's your velocity as a whole is this way because of friction, but your foot is trying to move backwards here. So, you know, there's you got to be careful with the direction sometimes, but it's always the opposite the direction that it's trying to move, okay? So, there's four types of friction. The first kind is static friction. What static friction is between? So this is going to be between um, not moving things. We'll say objects. Sounds a little more eloquent. So for example, here's the box. It's sitting there. If you're trying to push it, it is static friction holding it there. Alright, as opposed to kinetic, which is between things that slide. Alright, so after the box is moving and you're sliding it down the hallway, now you're having kinetic friction. So this is before it's moving, and this is after it's moving. Alright? That's the difference between static and kinetic. Now what's important to know is that static is going to be greater than kinetic. So it's always going to be the case where it's harder to get something started moving as opposed to letting it keep moving. All right, there's more force required. Now the reason why just to get into it a little bit, is because if you have the surface of the ground and the surface of the object, you're going to have these pressure points right here, which will cause the atoms to actually bond to some extent. All right. Now this bonding is going to occur only in static because the materials are still, so when you have to push, you have to break those bonds, that takes more force, so that's what happens there. Now, kinetic doesn't have that, it just has these rough surfaces sliding and grinding against each other, so that's where that friction comes in. So static is always more, it doesn't matter about the surface area, it just matters about the materials, because no matter what, it'll always be on just a few pressure points. Alright, let's talk about rolling. Rolling is friction that uses wheels. Surprise, surprise, right? Now, when we're talking about wheels, we're talking about hard wheels. Okay? So not car tires, but like metal ball bearings or hard material. Now, the reason what makes this different is it deforms the surface slightly. Deforms the surface. Alright, so remember we talked about how the, the two surfaces kind of mash against each other? When you have a wheel rolling about there, it's going to kind of pancake the surface out, which makes rolling much less than kinetic. Alright, so rolling is going to be the, less, the least of these. Fluid is kind of like the weird one of the family, so this is with a fluid. I mean... Yeah, okay, with a fluid. What's a fluid? In case you don't remember, a fluid is a gas or a liquid. Okay, so it can be either one. So the biggest obvious ones for fluid friction are air resistance. Right, a 
that's a big one. Or like water resistance. If you're in a boat. Okay, your class is going to be focused on these two a lot. These two, not so much. Uh, air resistance is really annoying and difficult to calculate. You need calculus for that. Uh, just to give you an idea, the reason is, is because air resistance depends on the shape and the, the fluid, right? So like air or water. And it also depends on the velocity. But if you're going to use force to calculate velocity, and velocity to calculate force, you got to get out of there somehow, and that's where the calculus comes in. And we're not going to deal with that right now. So we are going to deal with static and kinetic 99% of the time. All right? Let's do that. Let's talk about Z formula. So the formula for friction, force of friction. I'm going to put an F there because it's friction. And there's a lot of forces you're going to come across in these days, huh? All right, this is the formula for the force of friction. Let's talk about what it means. This stands for force of friction. Surprise, surprise. And the force of friction is going to be measured in newtons. This guy right here is your normal force. Your normal force is going to be measured in newtons. Now, this guy right here, this is a letter. It is the letter mu. And it stands for the coefficient of friction. All right. Coefficient of friction. So a coefficient of friction is going to depend on the materials. say materials here because it depends like wood on metal, metal on metal, uh, ice on silk, paint on brass, on canvas, whatever. Okay, so it, it's just going to be a ratio here. We'll talk about it in a second. What are the units? Units are no units. Why is that? Because this is in newtons right here. Your normal force is already in newtons. What do you have to do to it to change it into newtons? You have to do nothing. So let's talk about coefficient of friction for just a minute. Coefficient of friction, if we solve it, it equals your frictional force divided by your normal force. So this is basically how much of your normal force turns into your friction force. Let's pretend it were 50%. That means that your coefficient is going to be 50%, or 0.5. Okay, so this is um, usually mu is going to be, uh, I guess you could equal zero. Usually it's going to be somewhere between, oops, between zero and one. Okay, but can be greater than one. There's no, there's no, there's no limit here, right? Let's pretend you had really, really sticky shoes. You can push greater than your own weight. That means they have a coefficient of friction that is greater than one. So usually it's less than one, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, that's the important thing. That's what we're trying to get at here. It's a ratio. Go get ratio. All right, let's do a practice. How hard do you need to pull a 45 kilogram box to get it to move on a mu equals 0.754? All right. So let's draw a beautiful picture of what's going on. Here's the 45 kilogram box. We need to calculate the force of gravity. We can do that. So we're going to take 45 times 9.8. That's going to equal 441 newtons. So we know the normal force is also 441 newtons because it's the equal and opposite reaction. So now if we want to pull this, that means we have to pull harder than the fr friction force. The friction force is going to go this way, 
and our force, our pole, is going to go this way. So let's calculate the friction force. The friction force is going to equal mu times the force normal. The force normal we know is 441. The, f the uh, coefficient is going to be 75, well, 0.75. So that means that the force of friction is going to equal about 331 newtons. So that is how hard you need to pull. Well, we'll say 332, I guess, but this is the answer they're looking for. Anything more than 331 will cause the box to start to move. All right, let's do one more. So this one we need to pull a box with a mass of 600 or with 600 newtons to get it to move and if you have a mass of 50 kilograms what does the mu need to be okay so here's our box now we need to pull this one with a force of 600 which means it's pulling us this way since we weigh 50 kilograms that means we weigh 490 newtons, and this is going to be going up at 490 newtons, which means our force of friction, which is going to pull us that way, is going to have to be more than 600. Right? Are we okay with that setup? So what do we know? We know that 600 is going to equal mu times 490. So to solve for this, we're going to take our 600 and we're going to divide by 490. So mu is going to equal 1.22. Now I'm, there's no unit to that since it's just a ratio. So that is what that that is what we will need. So there we can see an example of when you would need a bigger than one coefficient of friction, right? So you will need some sticky shoes to get there, but it is possible, it is allowed. All right, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.